He is on the table. Ollie, why are you on the table? Why are you on the table? Get off the table. <laughs> Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm bringing you round two of a booktube friends pick my TBR. So if you haven't watched my round one, go check it out. I will link it down below. I picked five of my very favorite booktube friends and asked them to pick a book off of my TBR cart for me to read and I read it in that vlog. So today we're going to do round two or throughout this whole month I'm going to be doing round two. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take me to complete these books but um, you'll get a very concise reading vlog in this video. <laughs> so again, I asked five of my booktube friends to help me with this video. I sent every single one of these people a whole entire picture or multiple pictures of my TBR cart and told them that they could pick any book off this cart for me to read and any book off of Kindle Unlimited for me to read because I also have that subscription service. All of them picked physical books for me to read. Um, I'm trying to find audiobooks for all of them. Currently, um, I'm not able to find an audiobook for one of them and the other one is a very long wait list for. So we'll see <laughs> what happens to those. Um, but each of them picked one, one book for me to read and they told me why they love it and why they recommend it to me. So let me tell you about the books that my friends picked. So my lovely friend, Deja from Deja Store on YouTube. I absolutely love her. She's my rereading buddy. We reread books together all the time. She picked The Bride Test by Helen Huang for me to read. So Deja told me she thinks that I will love it because it will remind me of some historical romance books that have a mail order brides in them, but it takes place in a contemporary setting. And she loved this book so much because of the characters and that it had such sweet but also steamy scenes. So yes, this is um, Helen Wong's second book um, after The Kiss Quotient. The Kiss Quotient is one of my favorite books of all time. The autism representation in there is absolutely perfection amazing i loved it so much and the romance and the, the steamy times were amazing so uh, i expect this book to be fantastic as well i've heard amazing things so apparently it's about kai and he has no feelings i believe he's the one who is on the autism spectrum he decides to avoid romantic relationships completely so his mother driven to desperation takes matters into her own, ha own hands and returns to vietnam to find him the perfect mail order bride then comes in esme and she's always felt out of place. When the opportunity to marry an American arises, she leaps at it, thinking it would be the break her family needs. Seducing Kai, however, does not go as planned. Esme's lessons in love seem to be working, but only on herself. She's hopelessly smitten with a man who believes he can never return her affection. Kai and Esme, their romance. I've heard amazing things about this book. Hopefully I love it. I got the audiobook for this from Libby, so I'm very excited to dive into this one. My next book to friend that I'm going to be talking about and getting a recommendation from today is Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life on YouTube. I love Crystal. We recently became friends and we've been gal palling it up, talking about so many different things, chatting on Instagram all the time. So I love her. So I had to ask her to be part of this challenge for myself. And so Crystal picked With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I read The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo earlier this year for a multicultural literature class and absolutely fell in love with it and I've heard amazing things about this book so I can't wait to dive in. So Crystal told me that she loves this one because of the sweet romance but mostly because of how our main character Imani was so strong and determined to build a great life for herself and her daughter. Also food. <laughs> so I know this book has a lot to do with cooking so I'm very excited. I'm, I've been getting into cooking recently so Hopefully there are some things that I can possibly learn from reading this one. Okay, so Amani was pregnant her freshman year and she has a daughter. And the one place she can let all of her stress go is the kitchen. There she lets her hands tell her what to cook. Listening to her intuition and adding a little something magical every time, turning her food into straight up goodness. Even though she's always dreamed of working in a kitchen after she graduates, Amani knows that it's not worth her time to pursue the impossible. Yet despite the rules she's made of her life and everyone else's rules, which she refuses to play by, once Amani starts cooking her only choice, it's let her talent break free. I am super excited for this. I love Elizabeth Acevedo's other book that I read by her and um, I got the audiobook for this from Libby and I believe Elizabeth Acevedo narrates it herself and she narrated The Poet X and it was fan-freaking-tastic so 
I can't wait to dive into this one. My next friend that we're gonna be talking about today and getting a recommendation from is Jen from The Book Refuge. Love Jen so much. I love getting so many recommendations from her. So it was no surprise to me that she picked a historical romance for me to read. Jen picked Again the Magic by Lisa Kleepas for me. So Jen told me there are two main reasons she loves this book. It has a scarred heroine, but scarred in a very interesting way. So I'm very excited to learn about that. It has a secondary love story about the friend of the hero and the heroine sister that is probably one of her favorite loves of the year. It deals with alcoholism in a time when no one called it that. And she just talked about how she's very personally touched by that. So I'm very, very much looking forward to reading this. I have only read The Ravenels or Ravenels by Lisa Claypest. I've only read uh, up to book three and I really want to continue on with the series but that's the only series I've read by her. I've heard amazing things about this one like everybody's reading it. I, it's popping up on all my friends channels. <laughs> so this one is about Lady Elaine, Elaine um, Marson who was brought up for one reason to make an advantageous marriage to a member of her own class. Instead she willingly gave up her innocence to John McKenna a servant on her father's estate. Their passionate transgression was unforgivable. John was sent away and Deline was left to live in the countryside and exile from London society. Now McKenna has made his fortune and he has returned more boldly handsome and more mesmerizing than before. His ruthless plan is to take revenge on the woman who shattered his dreams of love. But the magic between them burns as bright as ever and now he must decide whether to let vengeance take its toll or risk everything for his first and only love. It sounds like they were lovers and turned to hate on his side and possibly it'll turn back into love. I'm very excited for this. I'm very nervous about like him taking revenge on her. I don't know. I don't know if I like that concept but hopefully hopefully it turns out good. My next friend that I'm getting a recommendation from is my lovely friend Charles from Books on Stereo on YouTube. Love Charles. He is hilarious and funny. And he is also really, really, really supportive. He is one of the only people who always makes sure to pop in on my book club's live show. And he is just always so supportive and sweet to me. And I love him so much. So the book that Charles recommended me is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. I have read The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas and it is absolutely uh amazing so i am very excited for this one charles told me that he loves this book and um he loves angie thomas specifically and says that she's an icon in the ya space obviously and he just loves this book a lot he says this is quite different from the hate you give but it is also so special in dismantling the black monolith mentality i can't wait for this he also told me of course that the audiobook for this is amazing, him being the audiobook king and everything. So I got the audiobook off of Libby, so I can't wait to dive in. So this is about Brie, who wants to be the greatest rapper of all time, or at least win her first battle. And she is the daughter of an underground hip hop legend who has unfortunately already passed. But it's hard to get your come up when you're labeled a hoodlum at school and your fridge at home is empty after your mom loses her job. So Brie pours her anger and frustration into her first song, which goes viral for all the wrong reasons. Brie soon finds herself at the center of controversy portrayed by the media as more menace than MC. But with an eviction notice staring her family down, Brie doesn't just want to make it, she has to, even if it means becoming the very thing the public has made her out to be. This book just sounds super interesting. The Hate You Give was absolutely amazing. So hopefully this book gives me the same exact feelings as that. My last friend that I'm getting a recommendation from is Madison Mary from Princess and Paperback. I absolutely love her. She is so, so, so sweet. And I absolutely adore all of her romance recommendations. She doesn't read solely romance books. I just love all of her videos. Her vlogs give me life. I absolutely loved her video where she had her dad read the Akatar trilogy. One of the best videos I've ever watched in my entire life. It was amazing. So Mass and Mary ended up picking Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin for me to read. She told me that she loves how fun, snarky, and confident our main character Lou is, and she's so much fun and embraces her sexuality. Plus, the side characters are precious. And she says it also feels like a fantasy version of a historical romance. All of those reasons why she loves it sound amazing. I would love this book probably because of all those reasons. So this is the book where the audio version is um, 
like 12 weeks wait, which hopefully I, I can get it soon. I want to post this video as soon as possible and read these books as soon as possible, but I really want to listen to the audiobook. Also, again, The Magic was the one that didn't have an audiobook through my library, so I'm going to be physically reading that one, but that was a historical romance. I tend to fly through those, but this one. So let's talk about this one. I have actually read one chapter from this book. As you can see, there is one little green tabby in there and I think something came up with school or I don't know why something just came up to where I had to put it down after a chapter but I was very invested in the story and really wanted to read it so I heard this is a fantasy romance and people either tell me like it's YA or it's not YA I don't really know um, possibly just new adult so it says two years ago Louise LeBlanc fled her coven and took shelter in the city of Caesarine Caesarine Scissorine? I have no idea. <laughs> Forsaking all magic and living off whatever she could steal. Their witches like glue are hunted. They are feared and they are burned. Scorned to the church as a saucer, Reed Diggory has lived his life by one principle. Thou shall not suffer a witch to live. His path was never meant to cross with blues, but a wicked stunt forces them into an impossible union holy matrimony. The war between witches and church is an ancient one and Lou's most dangerous enemies bring a fate worse than fire. Unable to ignore her growing feelings yet powerless to change what she is, a choice must be made and love makes fools of us all. I've heard amazing things about this book, about this whole series as a whole. Amazing arranged marriage fantasy book. So I am looking forward to this one. I hope we'll get the audiobook in in time. If not, I'm gonna have to physically read it, which physically reading big books uh has been very difficult for me to recently but um hopefully i can get the audiobook in and i can't wait to read it so i'm gonna get to reading these books and i'll tell you what i think as i read them so let's go <laughs> Okay, so I am halfway through The Bride Test by Helen Huang. This is so good. This is so good. The best scene ever happened. They freaking kissed and I am like bursting with happiness. Oh, I love this so, so, so much. I knew I'd love it. I don't know why I've been putting it off for so long reading this, but I love Esme so much. She's so quirky and funny and she doesn't even know what the term autism means, but she knows to respect Kai and how he feels and his um, quirks. She stands up for him and she just really likes him. <laughs> and oh, it's so cute. <laughs> I am absolutely adoring this. Like I've just been listening to this all day long and I'm already halfway through. That's where the blue little tabby is. I really like Kai and I obviously love Esme. <laughs> Esme is so amazing. I wanna know how this book is gonna end. Like I wanna know what happens between them because he's so adamant about not having somebody to have feelings for because he thinks that since he has autism um nobody could love him which is so wrong <laughs> yeah he keeps like fighting his feelings and he needs to stop <laughs> he needs to stop fighting his feelings i also just met Quan. i don't think we met him in the first book i don't remember it's been a very long time since i've read the kiss quotient um i don't even remember if we met kai in the kiss quotient maybe we did i don't remember we met Quan in here in just in the scene that i just read and his book is the third book and I already like him, so I'm very excited for book number three. But I really love how Esme is just trying as hard as possible to provide for her family and for her daughter. The only thing I'm really confused on or have like an issue with kind of is her daughter has a dad obviously and the dad and Esme are not together, but her daughter's father I think has a wife or something. I don't remember if he was already married when Maybe she was, in, she was in high school when she got pregnant with her. I just want more information about that because we haven't really got, hello sir. We haven't really gotten that much. He is on the table. He is on the table. Ollie, why are you on the table? Why are you on the table? Get off the table. <laughs> anyway, I just want to know more information about that whole situation because we didn't really get all that much about it. Um, I just want to learn more. So maybe we'll learn more about that coming up. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. I'm just sucked into it. I've just been crafting and listening to this book and the narrator for this book is absolutely amazing as well. Sounds like my dogs are wanting to go outside and play. So um, I'm gonna go do that and I will update you when I finally finished it. Okay, so I am here to talk about my thoughts on The Bride Test by Helen Wong in a very concise format because there are four other books to read for this video and I don't want it to be super long. So my main thoughts about this book, I absolutely love this book. I just loved all the characters. I loved the romance in it. Just, it was, 
fantastic. I was sucked in. I could not stop listening to this book. I finished it all in one day. I needed to know what happened. It was freaking fantastic. I love everything about this book. I don't know if I like this one more, The Kiss Quotient more. I'm not sure yet. I haven't read The Kiss Quotient in over a year, so I don't really know, but I loved both of these. Helen Huang is freaking fantastic. I love her. So um, if you've always been hesitant to read this book like me, I don't know why I've been hesitant to read it. Just pick it up because it is like so good. <laughs> also, I love his mom. <laughs> Kai's mom is amazing. She owns her own restaurant and she's just like a matchmaker and I can't wait to see her and what she does in Quan's book. I wonder what happens with Quan's book. Like, who's Quan gonna be with? I need to go read the summary for that book because I completely forgot. Overall, I adored this. Thank you so much, Deja, for recommending this one to me. The audiobook also is fantastic. So yes, overall, I love this book. This was a great recommendation from Deja. Thank you so much, Deja. And um, I can't wait to read Quan's book after this. I, I'm in love with this book. <laughs> Okay, I am 50% of the way through On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. I'm listening to the audiobook and the narrator is the same one who narrated The Hate You Give. I'm, I've listened to the audiobook many times. I love The Hate You Give. It's just, <laughs> I'm thinking of Brie and Star kind of like similarly because of the narrator, but that's like a me thing. They're very different people, Brie and Star. Star is from The Hate You Give, Brie is from this book. Um, they're very different people. It's just confusing me a little bit because the narrator is the same for both characters, but I'm really enjoying this. We just left off on a chapter that I'm very intrigued to continue. It has something to do with the security at her high school. So when reading this book, like I love like the rap lyrics in here. I am not a rap person. I don't listen to rap music like that's just not my genre of music. I don't listen to rap. People talk really, really fast and it's hard for me to understand. And um, it's just not, hasn't really been my cup of tea before, but I really love reading the lyrics in it. So that's something I've learned. I really like the lyrics in here and how like a bunch of them are a deeper message than what is on just surface level. Like Brie right here, she wrote a song called On The Come Up. Like she's talking about how at face value, this is what the lyrics look like, but it actually means this when you look more into it. And people are saying like, well, other people aren't gonna understand that so that you might get criticism for that, which I had no idea. Like knowing me, I probably just would have taken the lyrics at face value and wouldn't have thought more about it. Whereas in Bree's mind, when she made this whole song, she knows that it means more or it means something else than what the lyrics say, which I would have never known about. I don't listen to rap music, you know? But I'm really enjoying this. My heart is broken for Brie and her family and her mom. Like her mom and her brother are trying so hard to get out of this situation that they've been put in in their lives. They're working so hard and unfortunately it's not really paying off all that much. Um, so I don't know, hopefully something happens to where they can get out of their horrible situation. Like nobody wants to live in a home and um, not have any heat, they can't pay the electric bill, and they um, are scared that they're gonna be evicted from their home. Nobody wants to go through that ever. I really like um, her little banter relationship with Curtis. Very, very interesting. I'm really liking that. Maybe that's gonna be a little bit of romance in here, but at the beginning, she really liked this guy named Malik, who she's been friends with for forever, but he just got a girlfriend but like he's also like looking at Brie differently or something like that. I don't know what's gonna happen, but like if Malik is treating her that way, like I say go with Curtis. Curtis seems like, like a nerdy fun dude that I think she would get along with as boyfriend, girlfriend, relationship, whatever. I already know that, um, what's his name, Supreme, whatever he's doing, it's not gonna be good. I already know that, I already know that. I, I don't honestly know that, I haven't read the book, but like that is my theory. Uh, Supreme's gonna do something to, mess all of this up or something like that. I don't know. And then I don't know about Aunt Pooh. I like Aunt Pooh, but I'm kind of nervous about Aunt Pooh. <laughs> I just read a scene that had her in it that just makes me really nervous about what's gonna happen with Aunt Pooh or what Aunt Pooh is gonna do. I don't know, but I'm surprisingly really enjoying this because I was skeptical to pick this up because I know it's about rapping and I don't listen to rap music. But this is like a huge surprise for me that I'm really enjoying this. So I'm gonna continue reading and hopefully I will be able to finish this 
by the end of the day because I'm flying through this audiobook. I just finished On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. I think I'm gonna give this one four stars um, just because I didn't love it as much as um, The Hate You Give. The Hate You Give which is honestly one of the best books I've ever read in my entire life and it just like, I made a whole video about this. I think like the same year that I started my booktube channel or the second year, I don't remember, but I made a whole video talking about that book and how it inspired me to be a better writer and tell my own story in certain things. The Hate You Give just holds a near and dear place to my heart. And this book was amazing, but it just, I didn't connect to it as much as that one. This book is still amazing and I really enjoyed it. There is one thing at the like end with like a tweet that I wanna know where that comes from. But like, I don't, it doesn't say who the, who the tweet at the end comes from and I'm very curious to know. Um, does that mean there's gonna be another book since it kind of like leaves off with you wanting more? You know, possibly. I really enjoyed this. I really love how Brie stood up for herself, realized what is important in life. Is it being famous or being true to who you are? And you really see her uh, struggle with that concept throughout the whole book and you see her come to realize what is important to her. I really loved her whole friendship part in here. She has two guy best friends and I really love that dynamic in there because in young adult books, we see a lot of romantic relationships, but I wouldn't necessarily say that in YA contemporary books, we see a lot of like um, dynamic friendships, like like seen in Angie Thomas's book, like even in The Hate You Give, the, the friendship relationships and Angie Thomas just really dove deep into like the friendships as well. The friendships were more important than the romance, which actually I am tending to like a little bit more in young adult contemporary. I never thought I would say that being a romance lover, but I have had some rocky friendships in my life and many friendships in my life where I'm not friends with those people anymore, but I used to be close to them, that kind of thing. Just overall a weird relationship with friends. I feel like her books, talk about friendships in a very authentic way that we have ups and downs and sometimes you have to cut them off due to your own mental health and being true to who you are and sometimes you can make up and realize both of you were wrong. Also, you can have friendships that will stay with you no matter what and I adore that part of her books. I just realized the lighting in here is really, really, really bad. I'm so sorry. But overall, I loved this. I hope there's another book um, involving Brie or maybe part of Brie's family. I know that book three, I believe it's called Concrete Rose, is about Star's dad when he was younger from The Hate You Give, and I cannot wait for that one. I loved Star's dad so much, so I thoroughly loved this one. It was so much fun. The audiobook sucked me in. I listened to it all in one day, and overall, I really recommend this, and thank you so much, Charles, for finally making me read this. Again, I was skeptical just because it was about rap music, and I'm not the biggest rap music fan, but you know what? I loved the rap music in here. It was so cool to read about, and the ending, the last rap scene that she did was honestly giving me chills. It was amazing. So again, thank you so much, Charles. I really enjoyed this one. Okay, I am halfway through with The Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo, um, which is chapter... Oh, I forget there's a number of chapters, but I love the short chapters in this book. That's something I do love. I'm on page 208 and I... I'm flying through this. I am loving this. I love her writing. Like, it is beautiful. She's an amazing storyteller, and just the narration, also, because she is the narrator for the audiobook, is flippin' fantastic. It's amazing. Also, can we just talk about how beautiful this cover is and the inside flap? Like, the, the naked book of this is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm just loving, um, Again, the narration, the story overall, and I love how we get to see a young adult book that like sheds a positive light on teen pregnancy. Yes, teen pregnancy is really hard, obviously, but Imani, like, she loves her daughter. Like, she wants her daughter. Like, she loves her daughter, and she wouldn't change having her daughter for the world. Like, her daughter is her world. She doesn't care what people think about her, and um, she stands up for herself, and I absolutely love that. Um, I love how we got to see her um, really get challenged in her ways of thinking, and her realizing that just because she's a great cook doesn't mean that she knows everything. I really like that, because people sometimes <laughs> 
need to realize that they don't know everything in the world even though they're very passionate or know a lot about something they don't know everything about it the relationship with her and the baby daddy is very interesting i like how like they're being visitation things and everything um but i feel like he's being very judgmental but he's also a teenage boy he wants what he can't have and when someone else has what he has he gets pissy about it and <laughs> that's like the main characteristic of a teenage boy <laughs> i'm loving this it is so much fun i am flying through it. This audiobook just isn't also that long. It's only seven and a half hours possibly and I listen on 2.5 times speed. So I am absolutely flying through this and I'm loving all the cooking stuff in here because I've gotten into cooking because of quarantine and everything and so I've just been gobbling this book up and I love her abuela so much um, and I hopefully nothing happens to her abuela because there's like hints that something's happening to her abuela and I don't want anything to happen to her. But I love how accepting and loving she is towards Imani and Emma and um, how she loves Emma too and doesn't get mad or judge Imani because she had Emma. Um, I see little hints here and there of like she's thinking I don't know how to describe it but like um, there are certain things where like she has said like oh I don't want you bringing boys around here um, like what will Emma think I feel like that's a little jab at how Imani got pregnant really young but again it was a one-time thing she did it one time and she got pregnant and um, that happens to some people unfortunately um, or fortunately if you look at it for fortunately for Imani she loves her daughter so I am like flying through this again loving it and I can't wait to figure out what happens um I love how passionate she's becoming in this class that she's in she's in a cooking class I'm also really liking her relationship with the boy in here with the new boy um I want to know what happens there because I heard that the romance in here is really really cute and so far it's really cute but hopefully there's something more to it so I'm going to continue reading and I'll let you know what I think about it once I finish it okay so it's actually been a very long time I'm currently actually editing this video and I realized that I never gave my final thoughts on With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. And that's because I believe I finished this book on audio when I was like in my parents' home, like around them. And it just, I don't like filming in front of people and it's loud and there's animals in there and everything. So I just didn't give my thoughts at that time. And then it just ended up slipping my mind because um, I was off to the next book, off to the next read. But I'm giving this five out of five stars. I don't remember the specifics at the moment because it's been at least two weeks since I've read this. I did love it though. I loved the story and I think this is just like an amazing like young adult book. I don't read a lot of young adult recently, like I haven't recently. And I feel like if you are young, if you love young adult books, I feel like this is the perfect thing to read. I normally love like romance in contemporary books or any book specifically, it has to have a romance in it for me or I won't like it most of the time. And like this one just had a hint of a romance to keep me on the edge of my seat and keep me so intrigued. But overall, I didn't love the romance. I loved the story of Imani. I loved watching her journey, watching her grow, watching her realize how much cooking like means to her and how she thinks isn't necessarily always right. She is a very stubborn person and she needs to learn from others to grow even more. And I loved that. I loved seeing also the representation of a teen mom. We don't get that a lot in young adult fiction when it doesn't have anything to do with the struggles of being a teen mom and scandal of teen pregnancy. Like sometimes women are just like normal teen moms and nothing else. <laughs> And that's what Imani was and I loved reading about that like being the teen mom in here like wasn't like the main focus of the story whereas other young adult books that have a teen mother in it that is the main issue issue or um, main plot point which in this one it wasn't and I loved that and I loved seeing her daughter in here and her grandmother was beautiful fantastic i loved reading about her i just loved all all the characters in this book were super duper well fleshed out and just beautiful to read about and i loved reading about every single person's story every single person's story i honestly want a second book it's probably not gonna happen but i'd love a second book like that would be amazing elizabeth Acevedo does it all over again i loved this book so much so i'm definitely giving this five stars thank you so much crystal for recommending this book to me i loved it i loved it the audiobook just sucked me and i think i finished it in literally a day if not a day i read it in two days i honestly don't remember it's been a very long time since i've read this 
this, but I loved this book and I really recommend it. If you're into young adult fiction, please read this book or just in general, if this book intrigues you, if you love food, like read this because I've gotten into cooking recently and baking and everything and just was just beautiful to read about and I loved learning about her relationship with food and everything. It was, it was just amazing. So yes, five stars. Thank you so much, Crystal, for recommending this one to me. It was amazing. <laughs> Okay, y'all, I am 50% of the way through. Again, The Magic by Lisa Kleypas. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I am obsessed with this. I've already started tabbing this up. I am obsessed. I am very interest interested to see how the rest of the book will go because this whole plot about McKenna wanting revenge for breaking his heart and everything. I want to know what he's gonna do and I don't really know what's gonna happen because if he does something to hurt her I'm gonna be very pissed. But I don't think he maybe does because people love this book and I would think that if people love this book he doesn't do anything drastic to. Is it Aline or Aline? Aileen? Aileen? Possibly. Um, tell me how to pronounce her name. Aileen? I'm pretty sure. Um, so for my tabs I have pink as love scenes, kissing scenes, that kind of stuff. Orange is amazing one-liners, like um, amazing quotes that I love. And then the green is um, a funny scene um, or a funny line. The first book took place when they were like 18, 17. Then something happens at the end of that section that broke my heart and then it jumps 12 years later. McKenna comes back to the estate and oh my word. <laughs> I'm also loving the side little relationship in here with another couple. I don't know if they have their own book, do they? Possibly, I don't know, I haven't looked into that. Um, but I'm loving their romance in here too and I wanna know more about that. I'm loving the backstory revolving around that. I am just entranced by this. I want to know how the story's gonna go because like Aileen feels like so distraught and feels like she can never ever marry somebody or nobody could ever love her or be intimate with her because of the way that she looks and um because she went through something tragic and um painful and heartbreaking and has left her looking in her eyes ugly. She just doesn't feel like anybody could be with her. And then McKenna's trying to figure out what's going on with her now and I'm thinking he's trying to get information on her to get revenge on her. I honestly just don't know how this is gonna go and I want to know how it's gonna go. I am like thoroughly enjoying myself. I have just been sucked into this story and I find it really interesting that there are like Americans in here because you don't get a lot of Americans in historical romances and um, I don't really enjoy ones that take place in America. This one takes place I believe in London. Americans come to visit their state that's in London. I don't know, I really like that. I really like that aspect to it. I am this far, I'm on chapter 11 and I just wanna know what happens. So I'm gonna go find out what happens. I've been messaging Jen about this book constantly and talking to her about it and I'm just in love with it and I understand why people love this book. I think hopefully it just gets better and better and better and like Jen always sobs when she reads this book so I am probably gonna sob. I don't know if I am. I will catch up with you and let you know my final thoughts when I am done with it. Okay, I'm doing a short little update um, because I have like this much left. So I've been putting off reading this book today. It is 1 a.m. because McKenna was just told something and um, he's about to go talk to... Is it Aileen? Aileen? I never know how to pronounce her name. Can you tell me how to pronounce her name? Aileen? He's about to go talk to her. But he like just like realized the truth. I wanna I wanna know what happens. I'm I'm so nervous to figure out what happens. I'm just also I'm I'm nervous. So I've been putting it off for a day, even though I shouldn't, and I should just read it. I'm very excited to know what happens, and I need to know what happens to these characters. And also the side characters in here, the side couple in here. Excuse me, they need their own book. Excuse me, do they have their own book? Possibly, I don't know. I am going to go finish this. So I have finished Again the Magic by Lisa Kleypas. I finished it last night. Wow. Okay, um, I was getting a little teary-eyed at points. I did not cry. I was expecting to cry, you know, and maybe that made my feelings go down a little bit. Maybe just because I had high expectations for making me cry. It got me very teary-eyed, but I have so many tabs in here, y'all. Like, so many tabs. I only really tab books like, books like this if I feel like the need to. Like, you notice, like, probably 
all the books so far that I've read for this video I have not tabbed up. Well that's mainly because whenever I listen to a book on audio I never really tab a book but if I'm reading it physically I go all in if I'm feeling it, if I need to tab it. So I felt like I needed to tab this one. This was a beautiful historical romance. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I have to look into the side characters in here. I'm probably pretty sure that their story is done, probably. I loved the side romance just as much, if not more, than the main one. I'm kind of hesitant on what to rate it currently. I don't know if it's a five star from me. I really liked it and really enjoyed it. It's just I wanted... I think I just wanted more when it came to, like, the ending between the two and more of a conversation between the two and... I just didn't like how much Alien like clo was closed off to him and just kept lying and lying and lying and lying. And she did it out of fear. I completely understand why she did it. But I just, she, she had so many opportunities to tell the truth and she didn't tell it until the very end. And I wish we just got more about them at the end, if that makes sense. I did love that epilogue though. It was really cute, really sweet. I, I again, I think I just wanted more from the end when it came to McKenna and Aileen, if that makes sense. That's my main issue with books. <laughs> if they don't have the kind of ending I love, I can't, I don't think, give it five stars. I love an ending where you get to see the couple be together a little bit after. I don't really like when books end like a, ch a page after the couple gets together, the book is over. Like I want to revel in them being together. Like I want to revel in it and I don't, I don't, I didn't really get to revel in the ending, you know? But that's just my personal preference. This overall book I think is, is a five star book. Honestly, I do. But I honestly don't know if it's a five star for me necessarily. It's probably a 4.5, which is great. That's what I normally do with books that I love that are going towards a five star and the ending is just a little short for me. I normally end up giving it a 4.5. So that might be the case for this one. I'm not sure yet. I always have to stew a little bit in my feelings when it comes to ratings. And then a couple days later, I will update my Goodreads with the ratings and everything. But I've been talking to Jen about this book. <laughs> constantly and like messaging her about it and telling her what parts have made me sad and I'm worried about these parts and she's just been chatting with me and honestly probably um laughing at parts that I am talking to her about. I loved reading this though. It was great. This is very different than The Ravenels that I've read by Lisa Kleypas. I've only read one other book by Lisa Kleypas and it wasn't my favorite thing. I think it was Suddenly You. Everyone else loves that book but me. I gave it like a three I'm pretty sure. Three stars. But like this is the first one that I've read that is not a part of that series and it was beautiful. It was amazing. I can't wait to read even more by Lisa Kleypas and I really want to look into the next books in this series. I haven't looked into them yet but Jen has told me how fantastic the rest of the series is. I'm gonna read them. <laughs> I'm going to. I don't know if I'm gonna read them now or later. We will see what I do. Um, I have a lot of books to read currently so maybe not right now but I just overall really loved this. Don't know what rating I'm gonna give it yet but thank you so much Jen for recommending this book to me. I I loved reading it. It kept me on the edge of my seat. I have so many beautiful lines that I highlighted in here that um, I could literally like hang up on my wall. They're beautiful lines. So overall this book was beautiful and amazing. So again, thank you so much Jen for recommending this one to me. I loved it. Okay, I'm a little over halfway through Serpent and Dove by Shelby Maharin. I am obsessed with this. This is definitely giving me like a Court of Thorns and Roses series vibes. It's not like the Court of Thorns and Roses series, but it's giving me like the same feelings of a young adult fantasy novel that you can't help but like adore and a narrator that's just snarky and witty. So it maybe actually gives me more feelings of Throne of Glass. I think Throne of Glass is the better um, similarity to it the book that's most similar i think that i can think of when it comes to like a witty fun narrator she does remind me of selena and i really like lou i really like her and then reed i i want to know more about reed we don't have a lot of like read chapters like normally i really like when books like have half and half in the quantity of um chapters when it comes to different narrators but I think like we're just getting more of Lou which maybe there'll be more of Reed later I don't know I am really loving this character and I'm really loving how she is slowly starting to like Reed um <laughs> very reluctantly and Reed is slowly starting to like her very reluctantly <laughs> I really love 
Ansel is his name, right? Ansel. Um, I really like him. He's cute and gangly and sweet. <laughs> and um, I really like his friendship with Lou. And I like Coco too. I like all these characters. It's a very interesting, very unique story dealing with witches. I've never really read a witch book like this. I think the concept of like there being kind of like a police force kind of like tasked to take down witches is very interesting because I've never really read anything like that. That that concept is a is a little like the Archangels or the Archangels in Crescent City or House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. That's kind of what I feel like is in here, but this one or this group in here is very religious, but they are obviously warping their religion to fit to their needs, which is not my thing. <laughs> um, but I understand how um, prevalent that is even in today's society, which <laughs> not gonna comment on. <laughs> that, that's not what I'm gonna talk about. That's a whole other can of worms. I am really loving this. I really don't know how this book is gonna continue. I'm at like the ball scene. I think it's a ball scene or a thing. She has to wear a fancy dress and she just saw Reed with, um, his ex and so I'm very much looking forward to reading the rest of that scene and figuring out what happens <laughs> but I also find the magic in here very unique and very interesting um, I just love the concept and just like the um, acts Lou has to do I'm still a little bit confused of the sometimes the magic things that she does but I'm very intrigued by it. I wish there was maybe a little more explanation, but maybe I will understand more as the book goes along. I really just want our characters to like stop not liking each other and just like each other already and then get together already. Cause I also heard that this book is somewhat steamy. Well, this is like um, a young adult book. So I don't think it can get really steaming and I know what really steamy is <laughs> um, for being a romance reader myself. So. Um, I'm very interested to just see how these characters will finally get together. I mean, hopefully they do. I need to go look at fan art of them because I do that, <laughs> especially with YA books because adult books, people don't really make all that many fan art things of them. Um, so it's more difficult for me to picture them in my brain. And so when I read a young adult novel, there's more likely to be um, some kind of fan art out there of them um, so I can picture the characters better in my brain. I need to go and do that. This book is just really ensnaring my attention. I started it today and it is 11.35 at night and I started only a couple of hours ago and I am thoroughly obsessed with it and I want to finish it. I don't know if I'm gonna finish it tonight um, because I think I have like seven hours left so I don't think that's gonna happen but hopefully I can finish it tomorrow um, because I really want y'all to watch this video but anyway um so far Madison your recommendation is holding up because I am absolutely adoring this I feel like if you like Throne of Glass you should definitely pick this up this one has more magic stuff in it though well the Throne of Glass series gets more magical as you go along but, like the book first book doesn't really have like magic at all okay so I'm gonna continue reading and I'll let you know my final thoughts when I finish reading this book okay so I just finished um Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahern this was so good i love this i think i'm gonna give it five stars i've already put in my hold for blood and honey for my audiobook from my library which is gonna be like 12 weeks long um so <laughs> that's gonna take a while i i loved this it gave me the same feelings that i get when i read throne of glass and i loved throne of glass but i read that years ago and i love how i'm getting that feeling back when i read this book now i found the magic to be again confusing and i wish there was more explanation on it that's my little only gripe is that i wish there was more explanation about like the threads that show up or something like that and the magic and everything i want more explanation about that but overall this was just so much fun and i really liked the um little plot twists that were in here that i didn't even know were plot twists or didn't even think there would be plot twists in here i think we should categorize this as a new adult because of the one one scene that is in here <laughs> um i don't think that this should be ya because of that one scene a new adult would probably fit better um just because i wouldn't think that would be a young adult book because of that particular scene in it also there's only one scene so i don't know why people are up in roars like this is so steamy and scandalous like there's only one scene in here which i thought was really great <laughs> and really loved seeing like reed and lou like slowly but surely 
grow from enemies to lovers. Um, this is truly an enemies to lovers romance story. I just can't wait for Blood and Honey. Like I want that so badly. I want to read that so badly. <laughs> Overall, this was a major win for me. I really recommend this one. If you haven't read it yet, please do. It's really good. I don't know why I kept off reading it for so long. Um, I think it's honestly because of the hype. Normally when a book is hyped up too much, I don't read it <laughs> or I put off reading it, which I don't know why my brain does that. It just does that. So thank you, Madison Mary, for this recommendation. It was amazing. I loved this and I can't wait to read Blood and Honey whenever it comes out. So that is the end of this video. Um, I read five books from my wonderful, lovely friends. So first I ended up reading The Bride Test by Helen Huang, recommended by Deja over at Deja Soar, and I ended up giving this one five flippin' stars. Then I read On the Come Up by Angie Thomas, and this was recommended from Charles from Books on Stereo, and I ended up giving this one four out of five stars. Then I read With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Elizabeth Acevedo and this was recommended from Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life. I ended up giving this one five out of five stars. Then I read Again the Magic by Lisa Kleypas and this was recommended by Jen from the Book Refuge and I ended up giving this one a 4.5 out of five stars. And lastly I read Servant of Death by Shelby Mahurin and this was recommended to me from Madison Mary from Princess and Paperback and I ended up giving this one five out of five stars. So there you have it. Those are five books that I read um, that were recommended from my wonderful booktube friends. Thank you so much to my wonderful friends for recommending me a book, uh, one of your favorite books, and I really loved all of them, so this was quite a win for me. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, but anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.